bottom trawling is dragging a net along the seafloor in order to catch the fish. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of bottom trawls. The most common kind of, of bottom trawling globally is what's called otter trawling. And that's where there's a, a simply a line that drags across the bottom, doesn't really dig in, but it's held on the bottom typically by steel wings called doors. Now, the, the, the impact of the bottom trawl on the bottom and on the things that live on the bottom is highly variable. Uh, and it depends both on the kind of net and the kind of bottom. You don't bottom trawl on rocky ground. You'd lose your net. Uh, and that's what most of the West Coast is. Mud and sand, that's what you want to fish with a trawl. And that total area on the U.S. West Coast is something like 10% of the continental shelf. And the amount of trawling that takes place doesn't have much impact. But there are places, particularly deep benthic systems or coral and sponge places that are very sensitive to trawling. So what we do in the U.S. is we typically close those. I was part of a study. We estimated how different the abundance of the benthic species is in different parts of the world. And in the west coast of the U.S., there might be a 2% uh, reduction in the benthic ecosystem due to trawling. It really, you know, there may be a few places where it's had an impact, but overall, you know, the, the continental shelf of the west coast of the United States is not in any sense different because of bottom trawling. There's this mythology that, oh, they've, they've cleaned off the continental shelves and they're having to go deeper. It's not true at all. Um, the places that boats go now are the same places they were going 30 years ago. So the, the best practice for bottom trawling is to identify the most sensitive places and protect those. They're a very small fraction of the bottom. So bottom trawling is kind of what I love to do the most. Uh, Technology has really changed. The way that we are managed here on the West Coast is probably the biggest driver behind that. You know, back when we first started, you know, nets were made out of cotton or they're made out of nylon, very heavy. Everything was really hard, hard on the bottom back in the old days. Now that our materials are lighter, the nets are made out of poly, um, which floats. Head ropes back then were all wrapped, cable um, and, and chain. Uh, now we use strong synthetic, and then you go into the doors. And so we started using what we would call pelagic doors. It's a higher aspect ratio, um, a taller door, and it's not really meant to be on the bottom, it's meant to be off, off the bottom. They use a hydrodynamic flow um, through these vents and through this to open your nets. So by using this, we can keep the door off the bottom. We have sensors that go in them. We tell, know exactly what our spread is. We know what the height of the door is off the bottom and what's going on. And then it goes to our sweeps. And so this rides, oh, anywhere from a foot off the bottom to about six feet off the bottom most of the time. With the use of this, then we go to our sweeps, our ground gear. We now use what we call elevated sweeps. We use what we call a combi wire, and then we have a a bobbin, a little 10 inch bobbin in between each section. The goal is to get the sweeps two and a half inches to three inches off the bottom. By doing that, they showed that there was very little interaction with crab and sea whips and all these other things that, that are on the bottom of the ocean. You know, back in the old days, if, if you made a tow and you got a few baskets of starfish and that you didn't even think about it. Nowadays, we have no starfish. I mean, you throw all trip and you see none. So all these little things have just changed over time and, and it's just made our fisheries better uh, here, here on the West Coast.